from homesteading to cooking to heirloom seed saving to prepping. We are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Today we're continuing our series on casual and complimentary prepping and we're continuing to answer the question about how much food does it need do we need for a year and creating a comprehensive homestead plan that will get us closer to that sustainability. Now in a previous video we talked about goats and sheep and the amount of calories that they could give and we concentrated on having four sheep and three goats uh, and they're both all female so that they could have more. Of course in this video we're going to talk about adding a couple males in too. But in that video we determined that we could get 268,200 calories from meat and 338,888 calories from milk. Milk is the big thing with uh, goats. You get more calories from milk than you ever get from the meat. So the total is 606,888 calories from four sheep and three goats. So if we look at that, that's as part of a complete year, that's about 43% of the calories needed for two people for a year. Or in other words, 1,460,000 calories is what it takes to get two people through a year. So we're going to look at what it costs to get started for that first year. Now, grazing animals are the most expensive animals to start with. They're more expensive than pigs. They're more expensive than uh, rabbits. They're more expensive than chickens and ducks and all that stuff. Grazing animals are the most expensive. So let's start out by looking at what some of that stuff costs. Okay, let's talk about sheep and goats. And yes, they can pasture together. Now there are all kinds, let's start off with goats. There are all kinds of goats out there from the Nubians to the Sanans who are both uh, milk breeds. Then you get into the, uh, the non-milk breeds, those goats that are bred for meat like the uh, Tennessee fainting goat you see here or like some of the other goats, of course, this one is also a Tennessee fainting goat, just a little bit younger. Then you've got the Boers, and you've got the Kikos, and those kind of goats. Those are uh, specifically bred for meat. Now let's talk about sheep. There are two different basic types of sheep. There are hair sheep, like the Katahdin here, and there are sheep that need to be sheared. Now, hair sheep are probably what we're going to talk about in this video because shearing brings on another cost. This one is a uh, black belly sheep. Shearing brings on another cost that, that I just really don't want to consider on my homestead. Now, before you bring that first sheep or goat home, you're going to have to discuss about fences. You're going to have to discuss about feeders and what they cost. And you're going to have to have some kind of shelter. Now, sheep don't require shelter that much, but the goats need a good dry place. But they all need a good dry place to lay them. You know, you can need to develop uh, spaces that are developed just for them to lamb or kid in. Those are things that you're going to have to have. Now, the absolute great thing for the homesteader about sheep and goats is they eat hay. But you are going to have to get some kind of thing so that they don't waste hay. Uh, these types of hay feeders that you're seeing here, even simple ones can be made from, this one's made from two IBC totes. Uh, you can make simple hay feeders, uh, but you're going to have to invest in feeders. And also, if you are going to milk, you're going to have to come up with staunchions to milk your sheep or goats in. Now, I don't know too much about milk and sheep, but goats are a thing. While goats and sheep eat grass and hay, they can benefit from a quality feed. The feed's going to help them with all the vitamins and minerals and things that they need to grow healthy and strong. Some of them can even be medicated and help. Now, it costs a lot to buy these feed by the bag. So when you think about sheep and goats, you might want to consider buying it by the ton. Uh, also, 
sheep and goats have different things that they need. Uh, they'll also need mineral blocks and some other things. They'll need parasitic stuff. So you need to make sure that you're prepared to provide these kinds of things for your sheep and goats. Sheep and goats are about as susceptible an animal on your homestead as any to predation. One thing that you could consider is a livestock guardian dog like a Marima or a Great Pyrenees or Akbash. Or, there are a lot of different livestock guardian breeds. This video is not about guardian breeds. You might even consider something like an alpaca or a llama or a donkey. Uh, only the large donkeys can be livestock guardians though. Okay, you see what some of that stuff costs. Now, what we have to decide here is the very first thing, number one, is what kind of breed do we want? Do we want little ones like Nigerian dwarfs that we can milk? Now, they're not going to give you the calories that a full-size dairy breed goat's going to do. Uh, as far as the sheep, do we want a sheep that's going to require to be sheared? Do we want to make wool? Do we want to do other things like that? Uh, for us, we're not interested in the wool. This video is about uh, food. It's about getting food ready for the homestead and creating sustainability. So we're going to concentrate on a hair sheep, something that we don't have to shear. Uh, I'm getting a little bit old to hold sheep and shear them and that kind of thing. I'd have to hire that done and I just that's just more money for me. So I can't see doing that. You might be different. I'm not saying that that's wrong. But let's talk about sheep first. If we are going to get sheep, let's say we're going to get a hair sheep, and I want to get a full-size hair sheep. I don't want to get a, a small one, a miniature size. I want to get a full-size. I've got a good-sized piece of ground, so I'm going to do a full-size. Now, a word of caution, if you've got a little bitty lot and you've got a full-size animal, they're not going to be happy and then you're not going to be happy. So you need to think about that and, and the size of ground that you have in order to look toward your sustainability and your prepper ideals. So just that to kind of get us started. Now for me, I want to start with four ewes and a ram. Now around here, you can reliably pick up ewes, young ewes, first year ewes that have never had a, never had a, a, a kid never had a, a baby lamb, had a lamb. They are about $125 a piece. So I want to get four ewes and one ram. So the rams are about $125 a piece too if you buy a young one. If you buy an older proven ram, it's going to cost more. If you buy, uh, if you buy stock that's registered, it's going to cost more. But I'm just doing this for me. I'm not going to raise them for anything else. Just for me to get started. So we're looking at 125 a piece. If you do that, five, it'll be five times 125. That comes out to $625. Then I want to get uh, goats. And again, I could consider Nigerian dwarfs or something like that. Uh, but I would have to have so many more to give me the amount of milk and meat that I want that uh, that might be better in, in certain situations. But I don't know. I'm, if I'm going to get full-size sheep, I'd just as soon get full-size goats. But again, this decision is something up to you. Uh, so I'm going to talk about, say, Nubians as a, uh, as a breed because you can eat them as well as milk them. So I'm going to say Nubians. And around here, you can get a, a Nubian or a Sainan. You could, I could even do a Sainan. It wouldn't matter to me. But you can do a Nubian or a Sainan. Uh, you can get a U for about $150. Uh, and that would be one that's never had a kid. Uh, and you could get uh, a little Buckland for 100 bucks. You can do that pretty consistently around here. So what we're talking about is 150 times 3 plus 100, so $550 uh, would be the cost to get these. Now, one of the trade-offs of great big goats and sheep, one of the trade-offs is a goat, a billy, a Nubian billy, can get up 
to 300 pounds. Uh, a Katahdin ram can get up to 280 pounds. That's a big animal. You go in the pen when they're rutting, you better not turn your back on them. Okay, They'll, they get nutty certain parts of the year, so you have to be willing to understand that and be ready to deal with it. Just saying, uh, it's a whole lot different than when a 50-pound uh, Nigerian dwarf gets pissed off and a 300-pound Nubian billy. All right? You might find that some billies are fairly docile and some billies are, are fairly mean. And then there's that one who's docile most of the time and then all at once he's not. So you've got to be prepared to deal with that kind of thing. Okay, it's time to talk about the single greatest expense for doing pastured animals, fencing. Fencing will cost you dearly. Uh, just an example, goat and sheep fence has two inch squares. That keeps them from getting their head in there into the fence and getting their horns hung. Uh, regular field fence has fairly large squares. They can get their head through and their horns through, and next thing you know, they're they're caught in the fence and they're they can die. Okay, some goats are are good about that. Now, Katahdin sheep they generally don't have horns, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you get a goat species, unless you're ready to disbud them every spring, you need to get sheep and goat fence. So sheep and goat fence, just an example to start with. Let's say we're going to fence in an acre, okay? And you can figure out what the perimeter of an acre is. I'm not going to go into all that math. But the perimeter of an acre is right at 1,000 feet. Well, to do that, these rolls come in 330-foot long rolls. So you buy three rolls, and that will come mighty close to your 1,000 feet to fence in an acre. So those cost about $229 a roll here in Kentucky. So if you multiply that out, that's $687. Then you can buy T-posts and put those in. And T-posts are running about $6 a piece for a 48-inch fence because you need to put them in the ground about 18 inches and a little bit sticking above that 48-inch fence. So we're talking about $6 a piece. And you're going to need one about every 8 feet. So that's one, 134 T-posts. Comes out to $804. So the total cost... Oh, and you need a gate. I'm sorry, I left out a little gate. Now you can hand make a gate out of pressure treated wood if you want to and put fencing on it. That would be fine. Uh, I'm going to say you buy a gate, a regular steel gate, and $100 for that. So $1,591 is what it's going to take to fence in an acre with a gate. It's the most expensive part of raising animals. Now, that didn't take into account anything but the materials. You have to supply all the labor for that. If you hire this acre fenced in with wooden posts that they drive in and uh, T-posts in between the wooden posts and that kind of thing. Now, I've got wooden posts that I'm putting up and then T-posts in between, but I'm doing it myself because I can't afford to hire it done. You know, if you wanted to fence an acre, it might cost you two or $3,000. Uh, to get somebody to come and fence an acre for you. So that's the next highest expense. And the reason I say an acre is you don't want to fence off too small a spot because you'll be unhappy and your animals will be unhappy. The next expense is going to be your infrastructure inside your pen, your feeders, your waterers, that kind of thing. Uh, that can be, you can do it relatively expensively, buying hay feeders and all this stuff, or you can build stuff yourself and do it kind of inexpensively. Uh, to get started with, I'm assuming you can water them in a bucket and uh, feed them with buckets and then make like a little trough out of wood and then make a, a standalone little hay feeder for real cheap. 
uh, you can do all that and uh, feed your goats that way. So feeders and uh, water buckets and that kind of thing, I'm figuring right at a hundred bucks. But now the next most expensive thing is going to be housing. Now you can go as simple as making pallet houses for your sheep and goats. Uh, one thing you do want to do is around here we have coyotes, we have foxes. Now a full-size goat is not going to fall prey to a fox. Uh, they would fall prey to a coyote though. Uh, they're not going to fall prey to those kinds of things, but they will, when they kid or when they lamb, they will fall prey, the lambs will fall prey to foxes, to goat, to uh, coyotes, to bobcats, whatever's in your area. If you've got a bear, you need to plan to have some kind of shelter that you can close them up at night because nighttime is the time when things get hairy. Now, for me... I've built a barn out of a carport. Had a carport set, built a barn. I'll show you that in another video. Uh, I haven't done that video yet because I'm building wings on the sides of it. But in that one, I'm going to have about $1,200 in it and going to have a good size space. Now, I think you could probably get by with $300 if you were starting with fewer animals. You could probably get by with $300. Bucks. So... Let's just go there and say you can get by with three hundred dollars, and uh, but that structure you'd probably have to add to it every year and and different things. So you need to think about what you're going to do to shelter your animals. And a run-in shed, unless it's very large, is probably not sufficient for your goats in a temperate place where we get snow and that kind of thing, because goats hate to be wet. The sheep they could care less. For the most part. Sheep don't care if they get wet. They don't care if they get snow on them. They don't care. But goats don't like to get wet. So you might need to think about that as you're designing your shelter. Between three and $1,200. Now let's talk about feed. Feed is one of those things that's going to be a recurring cost every year depending on how many animals you have. Your average goat or sheep is going to eat between three and five pounds of hay a day. Okay, a full size animal. What you want to think of it like this is for every hundred pounds of animal, there's three pounds of hay going to be consumed, or three pounds of feed going to be consumed. You could feed them a half a pound of feed a day, quarter in the morning, quarter at night, to bring them into the barn, get them come in, and you close them up to keep them away from predators. But, let's say you're going to Let's say you're feeding them hay, and the thing about it is, is between three and five pounds is what you're going to look at. You're going to feed them a little regular feed, so let's cut that down to an average for the year of two pounds, because in the summer, they're going to graze off of your pasture and the browse that's around your pasture, so that's going to be what they're going to eat for the most part, and it's going to save you some money. So let's talk about 365 days a year at two pounds a day per animal. Well, you've got to think about how many animals we've talked about. Well, we're talking about nine animals. Four, four ewes and a ram and three does and a billy. So if we're thinking about it that way, we've got nine animals. So at two pounds a piece of hay for nine animals, that's 18 pounds a day average. Now, in the summer, like I said, they're going to eat outside. They're going to eat the green stuff. They're going to eat the leaves off the bushes and the trees. And the, Okay? They're going to do that. But, that's 6,570 pounds of hay for the year. A little better than three tons. Now, this is for full-size animals now. A little better than three tons. Well, here... We've got hay that comes in different amounts. Uh, we've got the round bales that go anywhere from uh, 500 pounds all the way up to 1,200 pounds. Uh, if you get those, you're going to have to have some way of uh, dealing with those. Uh, I've got a tractor. So my tractor, I can put a spear on the bucket and be able to deal with those hay bales 
those big hay bales, not 1,200 pound ones. I've got to do the smaller ones, the four foot rolls, uh, about 800 pounds. So if I do that, I need about eight rolls a year to take care of these nine animals, eight rolls of hay a year. So here, a roll of hay is about $20. So those rolls, eight times 20 is 160. Now, some of them are $40 later in the season. If you buy them early in the summer, the rolls are about 20 bucks, and you can go to the farm, just pick them up. If you buy them late in the season, they are somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 bucks. So you, you can go and pick them up for $40. So that could double real quick depending on when you bought the hay and what kind of hay year it was in your area. Uh, bales of hay. If you don't have a tractor, then you're going to have to confine yourself to the to the 50 pound square bales. We well, call them square, but they're really rectangular. But anyhow, the square bales, they're 50 pounds, so what you're going to need is 131 of them. And you can cut down on this amount if you cut hay off your own property. And I'll put a link to our video, our playlist, about cutting hay with a bush hog and raking it with a hay rake and storing loose hay. So I'll, I'll put the link to that right here. Uh, they're about $4 a piece. So if you're buying individuals, uh, that's about $524 if you're buying the 50 pound bales in order to get the amount of hay, this uh, three, and a half, three and a quarter tons that you're gonna need. All right, now feed. One of the things you can do to help your animals and balance out their nutritional needs, hay may not supply all their nutrition. In a SHTF, hay might have to be what supplies all of their nutrition. Uh, you can give them stuff out of your garden too, uh, but you really have to limit that. You don't want to mess their rumen up. So you can give them, let's say you give them a half pound of uh, feed a day, quarter in the morning, quarter in the evening, 365 days a year, half pound per animal. That comes out to 1,642 pounds of feed. Now at $15 a bag, that's 33 bags. At $15 a bag, that's $495. So for a total, if you get the big round bales and then you buy these 33 bags of feed, we're looking at $655 to feed all nine animals for a year. All right, we've got the feed, we've got the fencing, we've got the animals, we've got the water and the feed troughs and things like that all taken care of. Uh, minerals. Almost every farm is deficient in certain mineral, minerals. Uh, you need to know what minerals are on your farm and supplement anything that they don't need. Now, you can buy a free choice mineral block that's suitable for both sheep and goats, but then you'll probably have to bolus your goats with copper because very few places have sufficient copper in their hay and in their feedstuffs to take care of goats. So that needs to be a thing that you think about. Now, if you allow them to have free choice minerals, then the good thing is with these free choice minerals, it's only going to cost somewhere in the neighborhood for a whole year of $75. Now we're talking about equipment. You're also going to have to have some little equipment. Uh, the shears for straightening up their hooves, you know, for clipping their hooves. You're going to have to have a set of uh, good quality shears so if you have to clean a place off of their hair in order to access a vein or something like that or to uh, clean your sheep's butt so that they don't get fly strike. You know, you're going to have to have a, some uh, shears for cutting the hair. And then you're going to need a bander for those little boys that you don't want to be breeding with the little girls. So you're going to need a bander. Well, in that first year, you can probably get by with an equipment cost of somewhere around $100. Now, that doesn't take into account if you want to have a hand milker and that kind of thing. But in that first year, you're not going to have any lambs or any uh, kid goats yet. 
So you don't have to worry about that. That could be a, an equipment expense in the second year. But now, this equipment ex expense, once you've got it, except for maintaining them, you know, their cost is already covered. This is not a recurring cost. Okay, we've talked about all this other stuff, but let's get to the point about eventually you're going to have to send some of these little buggers to freezer camp. That means you're going to have to kill them, skin them, gut them, process them. You know, whether you're making hamburger, whether you're making uh, goat chops or lamb chops or whatever you're going to do, leg of lamb, whatever you're making, you're either going to have to process them yourself or send them to be processed. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm considering that you're going to process them all yourself because that is a way to make this operation way more sustainable and cheaper. Our local processor, just for the heck of it, our local processor does goats and sheep for $65 a head. That's everything. That's the kill fee, that's the the disposal fee, that's everything. 65 bucks for sheep and 65 bucks for a goat. So they do them relatively cheaply uh, but, you know, and that's even cutting them up and vacuum sealing them into the individual cuts that you want. So you have to come to that, whichever one you want to do. For me, I'd rather not send a goat and sheep to a processor. Would I send a cow and a heartbeat? 600 pound cow, it's hard for one fella to process. A 600 pound hog, hard for one fella to process. If I've got help doing a hog, I'd do it myself. But, now, let's talk about one other thing. Goats will try your fences. Say that one more time. Goats will try your fences. One of the easiest ways, even though you've got this regular fence up to keep the goats in, they'll climb on it, they'll stand on it, they'll push on it, they'll scratch on it, they'll try and wriggle under it they'll try everything in the world to escape because that briar across the fence looks better to them than what they've got in their pen the only way to deter that is put a couple strands of electric one at the top and a couple in between now some people say they have luck keeping their goats in with just electric I haven't found that to be the case but if you're gonna do electric uh, let's say three strands of electric in an area about the size of an acre and goats take a significant shock to get the idea so you need at least a six joule charger uh, I have found them locally for 150 bucks uh, might cost you more where you live uh, a six joule charger is pretty hefty uh, ours is not got a solar cell so in a SHTF they might not be too good uh, because mine are going to be plug in uh, they I've already run electric out to the field so they can be plugged in now so you've got this charger that's going to charge your fence you need the fence you need the wire and you need the insulators and the wire and the insulator is going to be about $75 to do that acre so total cost $225 for the electric and that will keep your goats off your fence and your fence will last a whole lot longer and it will also help deter predators some they will try to come through your fence and get that zap and get away okay it's time to come to our final expense the final expense that we're going to talk about is whether or not you need to have a livestock guardian dog now when you get big animals, it is good to have a liability insurance policy in case your animal gets out and gets in the roads, hit by a car. It all depends on your state, what your laws and your stock laws are. Uh, and you folks that live out of, out of the U.S. that watch my channel, Australia and Canada and, and uh, Great Britain and India, when here in Kentucky, 
we've got uh, insurance companies that for a small fee will cover us with uh, liability insurance for our farm. Now, when I've got chickens and when I've got uh, ducks and geese and, and these real small things, rabbits, I don't really worry about the liability. There's not really a liability there. But when you get to these bigger animals, goats and sheep and cattle, there's a, the possibility that somebody could get hurt because one of those got out of your field. So you need to think about how you're going to deal with that. But let's talk about a livestock guardian dog. Now, livestock guardian dogs are just that. They're guard dogs. Guard dogs will fight and guard dogs will bite. It's just a fact of the matter. Let me say it again. Guard dogs will fight and guard dogs will bite. Uh, if you had a llama, alpaca's not so much, but I don't consider alpaca really a, a guard animal. A llama, a llama will bite. They have fighting teeth and everything. They'll bite and they'll kick and they can hurt people. So they're a liability. Guard dog. Livestock guardian dog is a liability. And if you've ever had a full-size jack, we used to have a full-size jack called Old Bob. Old Bob would bite a hunk out of you. If you got in the wrong place, Old Bob would lay it on you. And he would kick too. So he could actually do more damage probably than a livestock guardian dog would do. So these are liabilities on your homestead. If you can get by with putting your sheep and goats up at night, I would probably not do a livestock guardian animal. If you didn't have a lot of pressure on your predator pressure on your homestead, I probably wouldn't take on the liability of a livestock guardian animal. But some livestock guardian animals are just nice with humans. Uh, they don't have a problem with humans, just canids, other canids. But, again, that's a preference that you're going to have to make on your homestead. So, be aware that the number one liability on your homestead will be livestock guardian animals. Now, let's sum up where we are on how much it costs to get started for a year with goats and sheep. Well, the very first cost was our stock, $1,175. Then our fencing, when we fenced in an acre, $1,591. Uh, feeders and waterers, about 100 bucks. Shelter, anywhere from $300 to $1,200, okay, depending on how elaborate you wanted to go. Feed, $625. Minerals, $75. Miscellaneous equipment, banders and shears and goat shears and hunter bucks. Medical costs, $150. Processing costs, again, you could have a processing cost, but for us it's going to be $0 because we're going to process our own. Uh, electric fence, $225. And a guard dog. Well, anywhere from $0 to 350 uh, You can find a Great Pyrenees or a Marema or something like that as a young dog that's been with sheep and goats its whole life and around here for about 350 bucks. So for a total cost of anywhere between $4,341 and $5,591, depending on your infrastructure and whether or not you've got a guard dog. So now, what part of that is recurring year after year after year? Well, the recurring cost is only going to be your feed, your minerals, and your, and your vet costs. So you're looking at $850. There'll be some costs for doing your fences, fixing anything that gets damaged, maybe replacing a fence charger. But those shouldn't happen in the first year. They'll be a couple years down the road. And the next year, you'll want to probably do another acre to have another paddock. So just think about those things as you go. 
uh, the non-recurring costs, what it cost you to start this year. $3,491 up to $4,741. Those are the costs that are not going to be recurring. So you can look at it in that light and understand that those costs are not going to recur on you. Now, overall, when you get your initial setup done and you've got everything established, you're going to want to look at $1,600 an acre to add fencing as you go. In order to be sustainable, what you want to do, you want to have your animals where you can rotate them in the summer months from paddock to paddock to paddock to help keep down on parasite load. All right? In a SHTF, if something happened, that parasite load is going to take your animals out. So you need to do that as, uh, as you progress. So each year, figure $1,600 until you get three acres fenced off. Okay? Does that make sense? Now, if you like this kind of stuff, this homestead and do-it-yourself kind of stuff, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. We do this stuff every week, sometimes five times a week. just depends on what's going on in the homestead. So with that being said, it's time for me to get on to the next thing.